Arthur Bruff was a British actor, best known for portraying the character of senior menswear salesman Mr. Ernest Granger on the BBC sitcom Are You Being Served? Biography Theatre The diminutive actor originally wanted to become a teacher, but failed to gain such employment, and worked in a solicitor's office. He found this job too mundane and he began to take an interest in the theatre. After indulging in amateur theatricals, Bruff attended the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art in the mid-1920s. After graduating, he joined a Shakespearean theatrical troupe, where he met his wife-to-be, actress Elizabeth Adiman. After they married, they used their wedding dowry as collateral to rent the Lees Pavilion, a repertory theatre in Folkestone, Kent. They had one daughter, Joanna, who was educated at Ashford School for Girls. Browth ran the company and acted in the shows and, once the new Folkestone Wahida was established, he established new repertory companies in Bradford, Bristol, Blackpool, Keithley, Leeds, Lincoln, Oxford and Southampton, as well as other acting companies throughout the country. With the outbreak of World War II, he enlisted in the Royal Navy, in which he served for the duration of the war. His service included helping with the evacuation of Dunkirk in 1940, his ship returning to the rescue scene several times. After the war following demobilization, he resumed his acting career and reopened the Folkestone Wahida. Many prominent actors began their careers with the Arthur Bruff players, including Peter Barkworth, who appeared in The Guinea Pig in 1948, Eric Lander, later a star of the TV series No Hiding Place, in 1949, Polly James in the 1960s, and Anne Stanley Brass who started out as ASM in 1960 and went on to play Ida the Maid in Pool's Paradise by Philip King, as well as appearing in the Aspern Papers, Candida, and A Taste of Honey at the Little Folkestone Theatre. Others included Andrew Jack, Sidney Sturgis, who went on to marry Barry Morse, and Trevor Bannister, who would later act alongside Bruff in Are You Being Served. In those days a local repertory company would present a fresh play each week to rival the cinemas, with a small stable cast rehearsing one play by day, whilst performing what they had rehearsed the previous week each evening, with a mid-week tea matinee. Since there was a limited number of actors in the company for economic reasons, they often had to play characters far from their own age or appearance. Bruff took his company on tour and helped establish Wahida companies in South End and Eastbourne. Television with the rise of television, Browth predicted the eclipse of repertory theatre as a viable entertainment form. In the 1960s he began seeking roles in the mass media, appearing in small roles in movies and television. His daughter, Joanna Hutton, said this about his forecast of the decline of repertory theatre. He was very astute and unsentimental about it. He realized the era was over and that he must diversify. According to his daughter, he first found it hard adjusting from stage to screen. He realized how hammy he was. He used to take the mickey out of himself. It always acted in a Shakespearean manner and suddenly realized he had to tone down his performance for film. One of the first jobs Bruff did away from the stage was the film The Green Man with Alistair Sim, in which he played the landlord of the eponymous hotel. He had a minor role opposite Jane Mansfield in The Challenge, and made guest appearances in TV shows such as Upstairs, Downstairs, Dad's Army, Z Cars, The Persuaders, Adam Adam and Lives, Randall and Hopkirk and Jason King. He also continued to appear in theatrical productions, including Half a Sixpence, playing a shopkeeper. The Folkestone Wahida continued until 1969 before closing at the time that Broff's wife Elizabeth began to suffer ill health. Are you being served? In 1972, Browth was cast as Ernest Granger in the BBC sitcom Are You Being Served? by Jeremy Lloyd and David Croft. Initially a pilot episode in the comedy Playhouse slot, it was well received and commissioned for a series in early 1973. Set in a fading department store, Browth played the senior menswear salesman, with assistants Mr. Humphreys and Mr. Lucas. 
The show became enormously popular, with an audience of 22 million in 1979, and ran until 1985. After the show completed its fifth season in 1977, all was going well when, on Easter Sunday 26 March 1978, Arthur Broff's wife of 50 years, Elizabeth died, and the emotionally devastated Bruff announced he was quitting acting. According to his daughter, he stayed with her for a few weeks, during which time Jeremy Lloyd and David Croft made contact to say they were writing him into the next series. However, he died just two months after his wife, on 28 May 1978, in Folkestone. Croft decided not to have another actor take over the part of Mr. Granger, so his character in OU Being Served was replaced by Mr. Tebbs, played by James Hayter. Related family life His daughter Joanna Hutton became the first female curator of the Bronte Parsonage Museum in Haworth for a period in the 1960s, coincidentally just three miles away from the town of Keithley, where Arthur Broff's Are You Being Served, co-star Molly Sugden was born. His twin brother owned and operated Baker's The Butchers in Petersfield High Street for many years. Credits Arthur Bruff dedicated his life to the theatre, and Are You Being Served, co-star Molly Sugden credited him with helping train a generation of actors. His colleagues have fond memories of working with Bruff, who, as his daughter noted, was a highly respected actor who'd spent 40 years in the profession. At the time of his death, David Croft said, Arthur created a living character who was the inspiration for much of the humor. His personality made him a pivot round which a whole lot of laughter and affection revolved, with a mischievous sense of humor. He would often pull pranks on the rest of the cast during recordings. Despite this, however, Trevor Bannister held him in very high regard, saying of him that he was a wicked old man but a wonderful man. David Croft recalls the time Arthur would disappear from the set. Whenever we were rehearsing it vanished at about 3 minutes to 11. For a while we wondered where he went, but eventually discovered that he'd nip next door to the pub for a quick pink gin. We'd watch from the window as this little figure hurled towards the pub. We never spoke to him about it. One day when he returned, John Inman asked where he'd been. 